The record um, button has okay. been, excuse me, the record button so has been pushed. All right, so now we are officially live, and we are officially welcoming you to the um, webinar go-to meeting that is about new chapter development and chapter revitalization and resurgence for chapters that have gone a little bit more dormant and talking about how we want to have you engaged especially um, with our uh, national conference coming up in DC. Um, so EPIP. Ooh, I think uh, Michael we um, might have to mute a little bit until we uh, uh, officially need people to talk because we're going to probably get some background. Um, but as I was uh, saying, is EPIP is um, an organization that really believes in training um, professionals that are really ready to change the world through their actions. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about that. But before we go into it, wanted to make sure that we got a chance to know who's on the phone. Um, because you're all very talented people, and EPIP is really about the network and um, meeting others. Um, so I want to have you introduce yourself by saying your name, who you're representing, and um, what you're grateful for. And I'll start to model it. Uh, my name is Rasan Harris, and I am representing EPIP, but also uh, New York City, because that's where our national headquarters is um, located. And I guess I'm also representing Harlem, because that's where I live, and I always like to shout out Harlem. And um, what I'm grateful for is pretty obvious. I'm really grateful that um, I have a new little daughter in my household. And um, I'm grateful for every little bit of sleep I can sneak in. <laughs> so um, who would like to go next? Pop up, pop up. Dwayne. This is Dwayne Marshall. Uh, I am with the Southeastern Council of Foundations. That's who I'm here representing. We have too many states to mention, um, but let's just say that it's 11 states in the South. I am grateful to be in the industry in which I work, to have the life that I have, and the people that I work with. So that's it. First on, how are you doing? This is Chris Johnson from uh, this is here in Tampa from the Florida Philanthropic Network. Um, we are a statewide association of grant makers, very similar to my colleague that just spoke from SECF, and we represent the state of Florida. And right now, I'm thankful for today. I've been doing a lot of traveling, and you know, sometimes you're not always blessed with safe travel, and I have been, so I'm thankful to, to, for, for, for today's blessings. Hi, everyone. This is Val Porter. I'm in Atlanta representing the Foundation Center. And um, goodness, I'm, I'm grateful for a beautiful daughter who is eight now. So, Rasan, I know where you've been. And I'm also grateful for an amazing space that we have that is days old and represents a huge shift in how we're doing our work. And I will turn over to um, my colleague, Elise. Hi, I'm Elise Clova, also representing the Foundation Center. And um, I'm grateful to be sharing a desk with Val Porter in our new space as well. Um, it's been two months we've been working off-site, and now we're in a great new space. It's great to spend the day, spend my days with my colleagues in person. So I'm really grateful for that right now. This is Maggie Osborne with the Connecticut Council for Philanthropy. Hello to all. And I'm going to pick up on the rip and say I was late joining the call because I was getting off the phone with my daughter who was asking me for 500 bucks for a couch. So um, it goes full circle, gang. It's all fun, though. So um, I'll tell you, though, that uh, what I'm really grateful for is the new direction or the reinforced direction of EPIP and picking up sort of that idea that leadership um, exists from every seat and in every age and in every phase of people's career. And so I'm really excited about continuing that conversation in Connecticut. Uh, just adding on that. Yep. I'm uh, John MacArthur. I'm also with the Connecticut Council for Philanthropy. And uh, I am grateful personally for the uh, weather we're having up here. Uh, we're <laughs> finally done with winter. Highly grateful. I'll jump in, folks. Uh, this is Michael Barham, also also with EPIP, so representing uh, New York from our headquarters as well. And in the spirit of major EPIP life events, as you heard, Rasan has a new baby girl. I am 
actually getting married this Saturday. So I am grateful for my fiance and wife to be. Um, thank you. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> Amber, I'll see you out there. Yes. Hi, everyone. This is Amber Cruz with Lumina Foundation. Um, great to meet all of you and to be on a call with some new voices. I am grateful for that because sometimes I feel like I get caught up in the same circle. So I'm really excited to uh, be part of a new group here and to hear what's going on with EPIP. And I think that leaves Sadia. Hi, everyone. This is Sadia Kalam. Uh, I'm on the New York Steering Committee and um, also uh, EPIP coordinator. Um, I've spoken to some of you, so it's so great to, to hear your voices. Um, I am grateful for, for pretty much every single breath. Um, I am grateful for the people that I've gotten to know and um, building new relationships in the future and, and seeing how I can continue to support this amazing network. And Reagan, we are introducing ourselves. Um, if you see your screen up there, you can uh, say your name, who you represent, and what you're grateful for. Sure. I, I'm uh, Reagan gruber Moffat. I'm from the Winthrop Rockefeller Foundation down in Arkansas. Um, and I am thankful for lots of things, um, but uh, mostly that, that after days of rain, it, the rain appears to have let up, so, so maybe my week full of Mondays may let up as well. <laughs> that is fantastic. Um, everyone's gone, right? I am uh, I, I, this is Laura. I'm representing the Mary Reynolds Babcock Foundation, and I also represent Central Appalachia. And I'm grateful for the health of my 15-month-old and also to be included in this call. And very grateful for the work EPIP is doing. Thanks. Awesome, Laura. You, your name didn't show up on our list of attendees. Of I am, happy I'm, having, I'm having to call in, so that oh, might okay. be why. I'm not on the webinar, sorry. <laughs> I got you. Anybody else? Yeah, this is Gilbert Miller, and uh, I'm with the Boloco Foundation out of Columbus, Georgia. Uh, but I live in Orlando, Florida. Uh, so it's complicated, but uh, I'm great. I'm I'm grateful for uh, Central Florida, and I'm grateful for uh, my 14-month-old. As long as we're staying on topic of family here, um, sleep does come, Rasan. It it does. It's uh, it's a slow road at first, but it, it it will come. I promise you. I believe it when I see it. <laughs> hey, Gilbert from Maggie. Hey, Maggie. Awesome. So is that it? All right, all hearts and minds are clear. We're going on with the presentation. EPIP, um, what are we about? We are um, facing new challenges with a new kind of philanthropy, um, and that new philanthropy is going to need new leaders. Um, next slide. Emerging Practitioners in Philanthropy, EPIP, is a national network of foundation professionals and social entrepreneurs who strive for excellence in the practice of philanthropy. So that's who we are and what we do. Um, and we are an inclusive group of highly skilled and effective change makers committed to working together to build a just, equitable, and sustainable society. So it's not only about being effective um, and highly skilled, but it's why we're um, highly skilled and effective and why that's important, what kind of impact we're having. It's really trying to build a different kind of world that's more just, equitable, and sustainable. And those are our values. So um, we provide a platform for our community to connect with each other. And that's what's happening on this call. We're connecting with new people, um, geographically spread with um, different roles within our organizations. Um, to develop, uh, to have learning and practice uh, of leadership skills. So. Um, not only you're connecting with folks, but you're really being intentional about how you're developing yourself as a leader and learning. Um, and lastly, it's about um, having a voice and giving voice to emerging and transformative thoughts in the sector. So EPIP, um, if you don't remember anything else, I mean, there are three things that EPIP can do for you. It can get you connected with others that are uh, similarly like-minded and have the same kind of values. There's a chance for you to learn um, from each other and from national about skills and practices that will make you a more effective leader so you can have an impact on the community. 
and it's a space for uh, people to have a, a voice so that new and innovative thoughts can get to the table or thoughts that haven't gotten to the table because of power dynamics that have crowded them out. Um, but we're a space for those um, voices to, to have a space and hopefully influence the sector so that we can find um, answers to long-standing problems that plague communities. So, um, talking about community, um, we've looked at EPIP on three levels, the societal level, the social sector level, and the individual leader. And so um, the work is ultimately about communities um, because we want to have impact on communities and want to make the world a better place. So we realize that there are challenges in communities that reduce people's opportunities to have a ha happy and healthy life. And um, when we developed this slide, you know, the talking about new challenges was a little bit controversial because there have been long standing inequities that are, exist in communities. But the new challenge is, is I think, um, the diversity um, that exists in communities. So it calls for new partnerships for people to work together. Um, and an, another new challenge is, is that there's a widening, a widening disparity between the haves and have nots um, and technology um, and, and, and uh, resources, financial resources and kind of a knowledge. And that makes gaps and chasms even greater. And I think it makes it a little bit more difficult to, to come together and find solutions that really uh, ensure that all have opportunities for happy and healthy life. So as you can see, there are a bunch of problems that are happening within communities that are listed um, in this slide. And um, what we need is a new kind of philanthropy to face these challenges. So we need to be more innovative. We need to be more collaborative. We need to be open and transparent. We need to um, represent the different demographics that are um, within this country and the different generations. And we need to be able to engage and develop um, people um, so that all are engaged in the franchise, so to speak, and that um, different perspectives that might have been left to the side are brought into trying to have more rigorous problems, problem solving and um, attacking problems from a different um, lens to find solutions that hadn't been tried before. So in order to have this new kind of philanthropy, we're going to need new kinds of change makers, new leaders. So we're looking for people who are highly skilled, um, people that are inclusive in their practice, people that come from diverse backgrounds, people that are willing to adapt, and people that are passionate about doing the right thing and passionate and know why they're doing the work. Not just so that they can get a better job and a better salary and look more important for their, you know, their family and friends, but because they really want to make the world a better place. And so EPIP is the space where we're trying to develop these people that are highly skilled, that are inclusive, diverse, adaptable, and passionate. So what does it mean to be emerging? So um, one of the obvious things is um, being younger. Um, um, you know, when you're coming up and just getting your first job and you're just getting your first experiences, um, I think that's one definition of being emerging. But um, there's also, uh, you, you'd be emerging because you're coming in with a new perspective um, career-wise. You might have been in academia coming over to philanthropy, or you might have been in the business sector working in government. Um, and so EPIP can be helpful to you to understand some of the, the best practices and what's happening within the field of philanthropy and finding ways to apply your skills into this new space. But then also EPIP is for, um, the innovator, the entrepreneur. Um, and it's a way that we can have um, thoughts that have been marginalized um, because they might re represent uh, ideas that have come from a minority or some people who have not been in the mainstream and allows us to have transformative thought. Um, and that thought leadership will allow us to hopefully create the better philanthropy that we're, that we're aiming for. So it might be analyzing a problem from an environmental perspective that um, in the past hadn't been considered because of the economics and you know the way that the industry was run off of you know petroleum based energy and coal that people didn't really care about the environment but by understanding that the costs that happen aren't necessarily always financial but sometimes environmental uh, makes a difference or understanding how the structural um, problems and policies of the past have kept certain groups of people behind and, and allowed other people to advance. So when you see disparities in graduation rates or in wealth, and you see how that maps onto race 
that you kind of understand the problem from the, the long-standing origin of it and not just on the face that a certain group of people just seem to not be working hard enough or or just seems that if we just you know give this one person a fish that they'll be doing better but understanding of getting to the root of problems and having those types of thinkers and thought leaders at the center of philanthropy and including different people around the table will help us to have philanthropy be um, what it needs to be to create a more just and equitable society. So that's who we are in a quick nutshell, but I think you already knew that because that's why you're on this call and that's why it's exciting. Um, and you're on this call because many of you have expressed the desire to start a chapter or in a place where we had a chapter before and we need a little bit more uh, reinvigoration. So we wanted to make sure that you knew what was coming down the road. Oops. And that is the Unity Summit. And the Unity Summit is where we're going to have our national meeting. Um, the first day is going to be EPIP Unites. And we're going to really go deep and talk about um, what it looks like to do good in the 21st century. So um, the innovations and the new ways of approaching philanthropy that um, um, people need in order to have impact now. And we're also going to look at um, measuring a leader. So what are the leadership skill sets that allow the individuals to be impactful leaders and be able to change communities? Um, it's going to take place in Washington, D.C., um, June 6th through 8th. So it's just right around the corner. And um, it's going to be taking place at the Renaissance Hotel. And um, right before the, the Unity Summit happens, um, we're going to have our annual chapter leader gathering. And I'm just telling you that taking place on the 5th of June, which is a Thursday before the, the Unity Summit starts. And um, Michael's going to go a little bit more into depth about what exactly that, um, that event represents. But um, what we are coming to you to implore you uh, to understand that as a person that is interested in um, starting a new chapter, that coming to the Unity Summit as a whole is something that would be really important because you can connect to the network, that you'll see some of the best um, practices going forward, and you'll hear those voices that are transformative for philanthropy. But um, even more important, we think, um, by coming as someone who's interested in starting a chapter and having an opportunity to be a part of the chapter leader gathering, you'll see what other chapters are doing and connect with um, some of our leaders that are national um, across the country that are making it happen in their own communities and figuring out what practices they're using in order to organize um, their colleagues and peers in their local regions. And um, I wanted to make sure this was on your radar, but I also wanted to make sure that we were very explicit, that we we're extremely committed in making sure that you got out there. And for that reason, EPIP is willing to financially support and help partially subsidize um, your attendance um, to the chapter leader gathering and to the Unity Summit um, if you uh, are willing to sign up. Um, and we really wanted to give this open forum for you to ask us questions if you have them um, and for us to be able to answer them and for Michael to go a little bit more in depth about what support means and, um, and how this is going to be a really transformative and really useful um, experience, especially as you're thinking about starting a chapter in your state and region. Um, so I just wanted to uh, say again that the chapter uh, leader gathering is really exciting as it happens right before the Unity Conference and it's a chance for some of the EPIP insiders to, to meet with one another and talk about the types of work that they're doing in their local communities. And we really think that giving you an opportunity to talk to these chapter leaders will let you know that there, it's not rocket science to to really run a chapter. Um, it just takes a, a little bit of um, uh, just a little bit of effort and the willingness to really connect with others that really can make it go. And um, as I said, we're really excited about your interest in EPIP and want to really do what we can uh, to close the deal to make sure that you come out to the Unity Summit um, in June. Um, the one point I want to make in particular is that 
uh, the Renaissance Hotel has a sweetheart deal um, and a great room rate for us, but that room rate is not going to be in effect after Monday. So we'd want you to really consider um, taking us up on our offer of support to come out to our Unity Summit, um, you know, by Monday, so that we can um, really get you in and um, take advantage of uh, the the resources of. Um, the, the lower rate and opportunity to get in um, at that point. So I wanted to stop briefly to see if there were any questions before Michael got into the specifics of what happens at the chapter leader gathering and what EPIP support would look like for you to be able to attend. I know it's sometimes tough to talk on these calls. I'll even take in a chatted question uh, answered directly to me if people don't feel like typing up. So I will pause a little bit more to let the uncomfortable silence reign to give someone a chance to pop up if there's a question. All right, well, seeing that there are no questions at this point, oh, wait. Um, don't worry about being late. You know, sometimes it happens. This is, this is actually a recorded call, so you'll have a chance to hear what you missed already. But since there are no questions that I see right now, I will give Michael a chance to talk about um, wh exactly what's happening at the chapter leader gathering and what kind of support EPIP is willing to offer to get you guys to come. Thank you, Rasan. And hello, everyone. Again, for those of you who hopped on late, I am Michael Barham. I'm membership and operations manager with EPIP, which means um, for those of you who, who like baseball, I'm kind of like a utility player, do a little bit of everything. Um, and I've spoken with many of you here, and we are certainly um, well represented across the country on this call. A lot of folks in the South, some in the Northeast, um, some in the Midwest. So um, it's great to have you all here. Rasan went into some of the details around the Unity Summit, one thing I would stress is to go to our website and download um, the program schedule that's been put out for the Unity Summit as a whole, so that um, Friday night and Saturday, a lot of those activities are listed there. You'll see some of the fantastic sessions. Um, and we're really gonna be having some conversations that probably won't be taking place anywhere else. So. Um, I highly, highly encourage you, if you haven't taken a look at that program schedule, to go check it out. Um, on the EPIP website as well, there is um, some information on our sessions. We've also put together an emerging leader salon um, with some fantastic, um, really well-established folks. Um, Patrick McCarthy of the Andy Casey Foundation, Tanya Allen of Skillman. Cole Wilbur, who uh, many of you may know as well. So um, that's our opening plenary actually on Friday. That's the EPIP Unites portion. Um, and I, again, I highly encourage you all to go check that out and learn a little more about what we're doing on Friday and Saturday. Thursday, June 5th is the chapter leader gathering. And that's something we're really um, hoping some of you have the opportunity to attend. Um, Many folks who've been involved with the EPIP network um, and really don't get the full scope of the power of the network until they attend um, that chapter leader gathering. It's our yearly gathering that we have that precedes our annual conference. Um, and those folks who are really involved and who have built the chapters and have been there um, and done it at the local level all come together, talk about what what's going well for them, what they're struggling with, and and how you know they can use EPIP to advance the kind of uh, the change they really want to see in the world. Um, this year, we're planning a, a pretty cool skills building workshop. We're going to have um, some really awesome breakout sessions too, where you all will have the opportunity to meet um, meet those other folks who are doing it at the local level. Again, we have twelve chapters West Coast. We go as far as Hawaii. We have um, four on the East Coast. We have the Midwest represented as well. Um, and to get specific, and I know Rasan talked about support, 
um, that we're putting out there. We want to um, cover your registration for the Unity Summit, which will include um, include attendance for the chapter leader gathering and the entire Unity Summit, so Friday and Saturday and all the festivities that surround that. And we'd like to offer to your state, um, so obviously we have a lot of states represented here, we'd like to offer to each state $500 to support your travel or your lodging at the conference. Um, and again, this is somewhat time sensitive because we have the hotel deal that's actually um, expiring on Monday, as Rasan mentioned. But, you know, we want we saw this as a great opportunity to bring you all in, let you see what's going on um, with our most connected chapter leaders and get you out to the Unity Summit, which is going to be a really special conference this year. So um, we want to we want to make sure um, we do whatever we can to get you there. So we're going to, like we said, cover registration and offer um, five hundred dollars. And that can be spread among a few people or can be used to help um, one person attend. So we're putting that out there. I can help with the logistics. Um, but I, what I'd like to do, as Rasan did earlier, is open it up briefly for questions um, around whether it's the, the Unity Summit, the chapter leader gathering that's taking place on the 5th, or the support that we've discussed. Because... Um, I know we kind of threw a lot at you there, so if you all have any questions, I'll I'll open open the floor briefly. Michael, this is Maggie. So the um, the, the the chapter gathering, um, which would be the cohort of all the folks obviously leading the chapters, happens on Thursday. So if somebody were able to come in for that, would it be worth coming into that if they couldn't stay for the whole summit? Yes, I think I think that would be worthwhile. It's it the chapter leader gathering is going to be from eleven AM to five PM on Thursday. There's actually a Unity Summit kickoff event that evening that we're co hosting with um the independent sector and gen team. Um okay. we're actually just putting that out today as well. So um so yeah, they'll they'll be um that's a fantastic gathering and then there'll be a night event as well. So if um Someone's interested in just coming to that. I highly encourage that as well. And I especially I know you. Go ahead. No, I wanted to definitely um, agree and confirm that um, connecting with the other chapter leaders is a great way to understand what it takes to run uh, an EPIP chapter. Um, so right. it's worthwhile on that. And you have the act added extra bonus of the event that we're doing again with um, independent sector. So um, there'll be a, a great way to build your network. Um, and once you're, you go back to your home, you'll be able to reconnect and, and use them as a resource. And we also have um, regional coordinators um, like um, Sadia, who's working um, you know, with a lot of the new emerging um, chapters um, as a support to kind of keep people connected. But you know, it's a lot different when you are just hearing a voice over the phone or just hearing about people from afar, but when you have a chance to meet with them in person, it makes the ongoing relationship later a lot easier. So I really highly recommend coming out. Right. How big a gathering is that? How many folks do you suspect that you will have on Thursday? The chapter leader gathering is somewhat intimate. I think last year was probably between 30 and 40 folks. Um, and I'd expect a similar number this year. Thanks, Maggie. Yeah, what's the expectation for the Unity Summit? What do you mean by expectation? In terms of uh, attendance, I'm sorry. How big is okay. it? Okay. Yeah, so attendance. Does this link into all the, the pre activities and then the um, Council Foundations Conference, right? Yeah, so this year, so the thing about the Unity Summit, um, again, is that it is, uh, it was the, oops, I messed up. It was a way. What am I doing? Um, it, it was supposed to be a way for people not have to choose amongst the different affinity groups that they're in. And so it was a way that people who were like an APIP but also an EPIP member, they not have to choose between APIP and EPIP. Um, right. 
So it's going to be a, a really powerful and large gathering. We already have um, 270 people registered. Um, Great. So you know, it you know it's definitely going to be um, a, a large gathering. And one of the things that from the EPIP side that we think is extremely powerful is a way for folks who are EPIP and you know, for some of them that might really just identify with being young, first and foremost, are going to get to see a lot of folks that have experience with um, philanthropy and from different perspectives. And it's a way for them to broaden their networks within the field um, for folks that are young and old um, and from all different persuasions and actually seeing the field from a lot of different angles. So I think it's going to be a great place to really hear new voices and, and actually for ePivers to have a voice on a, a much different stage. So we're really excited about it. Right. Do we have other questions? All right. So I don't want to linger too long. Um, again, I know that you'll have an opportunity to um, contact us directly, but we wanted to make sure that you got the key message, which we want you there. We want you there so badly that we will even come out of our pocket to help make sure that you'll get there. Um, and really impressed upon you that we are here to support you, um, not just financially, but really um, in spirit and with content to figure out how to bring EPIP to where you are. Um, you know, we're really appreciative and want to work in partnership with the regional associations are where you are. So Chris, Dwayne, and Maggie looking directly at you. Um, your participation is fantastic and is exactly what, um, what we want. Um, EPIP is about developing people who are ready to do work in communities. And so people being EPIP members and doing great work for the regional associations and being on boards and and leading new charges is exactly what we want. We also want them in their local communities, you know, helping out teaching and making a difference. So um, we're thankful for your participation and your partnership. And um, we hope that all of you consider and taking us up on our offer. Um, again, Monday is, a, a, is one of the deadlines, but it's not the last deadline. Um, but if you are interested, we hope that you put the wheels in motion and let us know soon so that we can be as supportive as possible. So um, we're not really trying to take up all of your um, evening, but um, wanted to give one last space for any last comments, Michael. No, I just highly encourage. Oh, I'm sorry. sorry. Oh, as there was, there's a question out there. I respond to Michael. This is Dwayne. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Uh, what would be the most appropriate way to follow up with you? So the way to follow up would be is to email Michael. He sent out the invitation, so you should have his email in your inbox okay. and just let him know, and um, he'll help taking care of logistics and specifics. Yep, if there are no other questions, I, I highly encourage folks get in touch with me. If something's unclear, that's what I'm here for. Um, and one way or another, we want to help get you get you down to D.C. and see what we're all about and what the Unity Summit is all about. Um, so, you know, reach out to us, reach out to me directly, um, and that's what I'm here for, and I, and I hope uh, I hope to hear from you. And I just want to uh, reiterate again and, and just thank uh, both of you for uh, arranging the call, obviously, and, and making the opportunity available. And I think I speak for probably everybody on the call. I just want to thank you for... Uh, for the invitation. I think it's great. Thank you guys. I do think it's great too. And congratulations to both of you on all your big life shifts. Absolutely. Yep. Thank you so much. I mean we're really um, really excited about what's happening for the both of us. <laughs> <laughs> yes sir. There you go. Babies, marriage and all that all happening all at once. And conference. And conference. <laughs> Who knew? Yeah, you, all, you all make me feel really old. <laughs> <laughs> no, Maggie, Thank not you. at all. Great. Thank you. All right, well, have a great one. You too. Thank you very much. All right, take care. Thank you, Thank you folks. Thanks, everyone.